But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Let me tell you about my great God. Hey guys, Pastor Tim here. Hope you're ready to get your day started off in God's Word. We are in Exodus chapter uh, 24, and this is actually a pretty amazing chapter if you really stop to think about it. And in the previous chapters, if you want just to kind of catch up, we've been given the Ten Commandments, the law of God, and then uh, following judgments and laws after that. And and pretty much what we're getting is God's laws and his, his instructions for Israel. And here we see Israel about to enter into a covenant uh, with God. So God has told Moses all these things. All right, and now he's about to give it to Moses uh, in, in, in a written form and in, in, in tablets of stone uh, that he may go and teach these things unto uh, the children of Israel. So he calls Moses, uh, Aaron, and a couple of the elders, and se actually 70 uh, elders, to come up unto him to worship him. And then he's going to call Moses alone to come up unto him and he will give him uh, the, the, the tablets of stone and the written law of God and, and the other instructions as well to teach unto the children of Israel, all right? And, and the majority of the people are to uh, remain afar off, all right? And before Moses does this, he talks to the children of Israel and says what he's about to do, and they give their consent, hey, what the Lord says, we will do it, all right? So they're about to enter into this covenant uh, with, with God and in a way almost officially become his people and he officially uh, their God. And before he does that, Moses... Uh, that night, he writes down all that God has told him, the Ten Commandments, all these uh, judgments and so forth that he's been given. And the next day, he reads it unto the people, and they say, yes, what the Lord says, we will do. All right, hey, we're good with it, Moses. Go up there and, and make this covenant uh, with God. We will be his, his people. All right, and so he offers a sacrifice uh, unto the Lord there. He builds an altar at the base of the mountain. He has young men bring in uh, offerings for a burnt sacrifice and he takes the blood thereof just at, uh, and sprinkles it upon the altar and even sprinkles it upon uh, the people as well. Obviously, I don't think it means all the people, most likely just the young men that brought forth the uh, sacrifices, but it's a picture of just the importance and the, the severity uh, and the sacredness really of what this covenant means. Hey, we are giving our lives. We are, we are committing ourselves unto Jehovah God. This is a very serious matter. It's not to be taken lightly, and it's a covenant that God is keeping uh, unto this day. And so they do that, and then Moses and uh, Aaron, Abihu, and so forth, and 70 of the elders go up uh, into a little bit further into the mount, and uh, they, see, uh, they see the God of Israel. Now, we do know the Bible says that no man has seen God. Um, so what is most likely what they're seeing here is either a, a theophany, which is a manis, a manis of, ah, I can't say the word, a manifestation of God or a Christophany, a, manifesta, a manifestation of Christ. Forgive me. Don't know why I'm struggling with that right now. Um, so they don't see the actual God. They don't see the actual Christ because no man can see uh, God and live. They most likely saw either um a, a, a presence of his glory, a manifestation of his glory, or a, a or a, manifest, a manifestation, oh my word, of Christ or God himself, not actual Christ or God. And so they see the God of Israel, and what would usually be the case, what, you know, if, if they actually did see the actual God, uh, they would be struck dead. That's not the case. They actually get to worship with God. They get to eat and drink with him and worship God. And, and when there comes an end to this, God then calls Moses to come up with him further into the mount. So uh, Moses and Joshua go up further into the mount and he leaves Mo uh, Aaron and her in charge of all matters because he knows he's going to be up there for a while. We find out at the end of this chapter that his duration up in the mount is about 40 days and 40 nights. So he's gone for uh, several weeks. All right, the children of Israel are left afar off. All they see at the top of the mount is just this, this um, amazing sight, but very terrifying sight of just this cloud of fire and, and, and so forth just covering the top of the mount. And all they know is that Moses is up there and they're all the way uh, down here. But they've already agreed, hey, whatever God wants for us, we will do. We will follow God. We, we commit ourselves unto him. So, But Moses leaves Aaron and her in charge. Any matters that come up while he's gone up in the mount, they're supposed to take care of. We're going to see uh, how well they do with that. And 
that's where the chapter leaves off. But we do know what God's going to do with Moses up there. He's going to speak with Moses. He's going to give him uh, the tablets of stone with the Ten Commandments on. He's going to give him uh, the rest of the law as well. And it's Moses' job to teach the children of Israel uh, the law of God. Um, in that, we see a great picture of us as Christians. This is our job to teach uh, other Christians as well what God's word uh, says, especially younger, uh, young and new believers. Hey, teach them what God's word says. Don't simply teach them uh, your own opinions. Don't simply teach them your uh, man's ways. No, teach them what God's word says. That's the duty of every mature Christian uh, unto the next generation coming up to follow Christ. That's all we got for today's chapter, guys. I hope you wrote some things down. Um, just kind of picture for a second there just how amazing it would be to just kind of be in their situation where even as the elders, they're able to worship uh, with a manifestation of God or or as Moses himself who spends over a month up at the peak of the mount just talking with God. It's an amazing thing to consider the privilege, the relationship, the closeness he had with God. Um, that's something that every Christian could aspire uh, to attain. Uh, we won't attain it here on earth, but guys, there's going to come a day uh, when we'll be able to worship with our Lord and Savior uh, in heaven. And I hope that's the case for everyone watching this video. Uh, other than that, hope you guys are writing things down. As always, tell somebody what you got out of God's word today. Stay safe, stay healthy. God bless.